Hi guys, this is Daryl and welcome back to Sci-Fi Odyssey. In this video, we're taking another deep dive into the universe of Ian M. Banks' culture series to answer the question that stumps many readers. Is Earth, and by extension humanity, part of the culture? Ian M. Banks' culture series has enthralled science fiction fans with its depiction of a galaxy-spanning post-human civilization known as the culture. This highly advanced society, composed of various humanoid species and artificial intelligences, has raised intriguing questions about the nature of humanity and its place in the universe. One question that frequently arises is whether Earth, and by extension Homo sapiens, is part of the culture society. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to assume that you have a pretty good grasp of what the culture is, but if you don't and want to know more, you can watch my video here. The question of whether Earth is part of the culture remains open to interpretation and is a topic of discussion and speculation among fans of the series. This ambiguity and the resulting discussions are part of what makes the culture series so engaging and thought-provoking for its readers. To begin to unravel this, we need to first understand our definition of human. In the series, Ian M. Banks employs a broader definition of the word human than we traditionally use. In our world, the term human refers specifically to Homo sapiens, the species to which all modern humans belong. However, in the culture series, human is used more broadly to refer to all humanoid beings regardless of their exact species or origin. The culture could also be deemed a post-human civilization, meaning that its biological inhabitants have evolved beyond what we would traditionally recognize as human. These beings have been significantly modified and enhanced through genetic engineering and other advanced technologies. For example, humans in the culture can change their physical appearance, gender, or even regrow lost limbs. They're also immune to diseases, can control their own metabolism, and live for hundreds of years. These modifications are so extensive that the humans of the culture could be considered a different species altogether. This broader definition of human complicates the question of whether Earth humans, specifically Homo sapiens, are part of the culture. Homo sapiens as we know them, with our current biological limitations and without the advanced modifications of culture humans, do not appear to be part of the culture. So just because Banks uses human and humanoid, it doesn't mean these characters are Homo sapiens. Confusing, but okay. Next, let's look at the short story State of the Art, which provides the most direct insight into the relationship between Earth and the culture. State of the Art serves as a crucial narrative in the culture series as it directly addresses the relationship between Earth and the culture. Set in the time period we would think of as 1977, the short story centers around the visit of a culture ship, the Arbitrary, to Earth. The crew of the Arbitrary, composed of culture citizens, including the character Daisyet Sma, grapples with the question of whether to intervene in Earth's development, a decision that has far-reaching implications. The core of the narrative revolves around the moral dilemma faced by the crew of the Arbitrary. The culture, a civilization vastly advanced, both technologically and socially compared to Earth, operates under a general policy of non-intervention with less advanced civilizations. This policy stems from the culture's belief in the autonomy and self-determination of all civilizations. However, the crew members of the Arbitrary are deeply disturbed by the various forms of suffering they observe on Earth, leading them to question whether it would be morally justifiable to intervene and share the culture's advanced knowledge and technology with humanity. Ultimately, the culture decides not to make contact with Earth or intervene in its development leaving Earth to evolve on its own terms. The decision not to intervene implies that, at least up to that point, Earth and its human inhabitants were not part of the culture. Given these bits of information, we can also infer a few things, or attempt to. Daisyet Sma, who features in State of the Art, is also a recurring character in Use of Weapons. The exact timing of the events in Use of Weapons relative to State of the Art or other culture novels is not specified. However, it's clear that the events in Use of Weapons take place after the events of the State of the Art, as Daisyet Sma references her experiences on Earth. So you could assume that at least in State of the Art and Use of Weapons, Earth is not part of the culture because Daisyet Sma is still alive. 
but that might not necessarily be the case. Citizens of the culture can live for a very long time, largely due to their advanced biotechnology. Humans in the culture have been genetically engineered to live longer, healthier lives, and it's not uncommon for them to live for several centuries. For example, in the novel Consider Fleabas, one of the characters mentions that the average lifespan of a culture citizen is around 350 to 400 years. However, some choose to live much longer, and it is theoretically possible for a culture citizen to live indefinitely, either by those repeatedly regenerating their biological body or by transferring their consciousness into a different substrate. The culture also has technology that allows for storage and reactivation of consciousness. So in a sense, death is not necessarily permanent in the culture, as long as the individual chooses to continue existing. So unfortunately, this doesn't help us too much, as it's entirely possible that hundreds of years have passed between the events, during which time Earth and humanity might have joined the culture. The thing to remember here is that when it comes to the ambiguity in the culture series, Banks was deliberate. Banks masterfully created a universe that is deeply intricate and philosophically engaging. A hallmark of his writing is the deliberate ambiguity he infuses into the narrative, leaving many aspects of the culture universe open to interpretation. This is not an oversight or a gap in the world building. It is a deliberate choice by Banks to engage the reader in active contemplation and interpretation of the text. The Culture series grapples with a multitude of complex themes such as identity, civilization, morality, artificial intelligence and the consequences of interventionism. Banks does not provide easy answers to the questions raised by these themes. Instead, he presents the reader with a variety of perspectives and scenarios that highlight the complexities and contradictions inherent in these topics by leaving many questions unanswered and aspects of the culture universe open to interpretation. Banks invites readers to engage in thoughtful reflection and discussion about the themes of the series. This is especially true for the question of Earth's relationship to the culture. Earth is mentioned infrequently in the series and its connection to the culture is never explicitly detailed. This has led to much speculation and discussion, which is the very point. Some people believe Earth humans may be ancestors of the culture, while others argue that the culture and Earth are entirely separate civilizations. This is one of the reasons why Banks never offered a detailed origin story of the culture or its inhabitants. It leaves room for interpretation and speculation about the exact nature of the humanoid species that make up the culture and their potential connection to Earth humans. The deliberate ambiguity is one of the most distinctive and engaging features in the series, and while this can lead to some frustration for readers who prefer a more straightforward narrative, it allows for a wider range of interpretations and encourages readers to think deeply about the complex themes presented in the novels. The ambiguity in the culture series serves to provoke thought and discussion, engaging the reader in an active process of interpretation and reflection, like we're doing now. So the question of whether Earth is part of the culture ultimately remains open to interpretation. Given the broader definition of human used in the culture series, the culture's decision not to intervene in Earth's development in state of the art, and the lack of a detailed origin story for the culture, it's not possible to say definitively. But I'd love to know what you think. Let me know in the comments. In the universe of the culture series, did Earth eventually grow up and join the culture? Thanks for watching guys, until next time.